or spirit controlling that man in the Roman army, legions are equals to 3,000 to 6,000 soldiers in the Roman army. So this is the demon controlling one man. Maybe, I don't know how many thousand demons that control that man. Now in verse 31, as we jump to verse 31, and they begged Jesus repeatedly not to order, order them to go into the abyss or bottomless pit. Keep begging Jesus. Don't send us into the bottomless pit. Now the pit is called abyss. It is a place of confinement for Satan and his demons. They don't want to go there. The moment they can see Satan is spirit, if you are casting demons, I will command you to go to the pit. They will scream on the top of their voice. They don't want to be cast out untimely into the pit. You can say, they want out in Jesus and they'll obey us. And they will obey you because of Jesus. They don't want to go there. It is an eternal confinement. Now they express their dread of Jesus' almighty power. And their fear, the torment they deserve. I want you to take note of the power of God over all the forces of the sat satanic kingdom. You need not to be informed only by this story. But I want you to hear as believers and growing in the Lord. But use what God has given to you as believers. Munching is doing it. Ladies and gentlemen, when there is somebody who is in need of prayer, don't call me. And Nanette is learning. He's beginning to pray. If there's a major thing, you can call me. Counseling. But if you can do it, Lord, I believe in you. I am your servant. You begin to pray and see the power of God working and moving in your life. Verse 32. And the demons pleaded with him to let him enter into pigs. See how the power of the evil forces are subjected under the disposition in decision of God Almighty. He was begging, Lord, can you allow us? Give us permission to go to the pigs. Now, Jesus permitted them to go to the pigs. Again, observe. They go, they went to the pigs. What happened? They did what they love to do, this evil spirit. They destroyed 2,000 pigs and they are drowned because from the steep mountain jump to the, to, the, to the ocean, they all drown. Observe. The spirit of Satan from lunatic in insanity controlling that man and now God gave them the permission to be released and be out of that man the same story killing 2,000 pigs. Listen to this. Jesus' presence is torment to them. And Jesus in the story invades the solit their solitary and lurking place among the tombs. As I make this application, this is wonderful. Every believer, regardless how young or old are you in the Lord, once you feel in love with God, you understand how to be close with God, you understand that God's power is available today, every believer, your presence, well, wherever you go, is a message to the kingdom of darkness. They will be intimidated and their, the fear will creep in into their being because of your presence. Now the spirits knew who are those who walk with God with power. And the evil spirit knew also for those who pretend to be walking with God but have no power. Church, this is what we are. God has given us not only the knowledge, information, or Christianity and knowledge, but power to stand against the forces of hell. Let us do forcefully to enlarge our place and territories. But, and then, but being influenced by the demon forces. While Satan and demons has no small pity to those under him, let us move with urgency to reach and deliver and heal people in Jesus' name. Now in, Ma uh, in Matthew 9, 18 to 34, let's jump to that. Thank you. While he was saying this, a synagogue leader came and knelt before him and said, My daughter has just died, but come and put your hand on her and she will leave. Jesus got up and went with him and he did his, he did his disciples. Just then, a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years, came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak. Take note of verse 21. 
She said to her son, if I only touch his cloth, I will be healed. Jesus turned and saw her. Take heart, daughter, he said, your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed at that moment. When Jesus entered the synagogue, leader's house, synagogue, uh, synagogue leader's house, and saw the noisy crowd, the people playing the pipe, he said, go away, the girl is not dead, but is dead, but they laugh at him. Now, this is now another incident that God not only proving his power over the forces of darkness, and God is revealing his mission and acts of compassion to the sick, to the scattered, tired, and weary people everywhere. No one would help and guide and fix their wounds and sufferings. They were just waiting to be oppressed as other people during the time and be destroyed at the schemes and ways of the predator, Satan, and the evil demons of hell. God cannot wait, so he came to his rescue. Now in the account of Matthew, the master touch of healing, compassion, has reached every area of person's need. Now the first, the man controlling the spirit. He has to say, or any option, what to do. The second person in this story is destroyed by death. The daughter of a ruler of the synagogue, and the third is a woman with an issue of blood for many years, is slowly dying, and deprived with all good things in life. And verse 18, a ruler came and worshipped him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will leave. Now here is the clear description. Like tsunamis taking the lives of many millions of people today in many countries of the world at the present time. The demon of death is working. That's that good story. And that was that good news. Now in this story, the battle of life and death is raging. And to our clarity and our information, it happens also to good people. Now Jairus is a man of authority in the synagogue. Now the daughter has just died. He's a good man. He understands the law of Moses and a man who is leader in the synagogue. And this moment in time, they, he needs the immediate rescue. I want you to take note of the words uttered by the church man, Jairus. In the sorrowful time when his daughter, around 12 years of age, just passed away. And he says, Just come and lay your hand on her, and she will leave. Jesus, just come and lay your hand on her and she will leave. Now, in verse 23, Jesus came in the rural house and it was, there was a noisy wailing. And Jesus said, hey, make room. And you will be surprised to see that Jesus said, you must move out. In other words, just few of them just came to Jesus, make room for the girl. He's not dead but sleeping. And then the response of the majority, they ridicule him. Now the Bible says the crowd was put outside. He went in and take notice, he took the hand of that dead girl and then the girl arose. Life is restored, faith is rewarded to the Father and Christ glorified. Now, to be successful in our ap application to God by prayer, four things are required, and this ruler teaches us what they are. As we number one, a man should place himself in the presence of God. Jairus came to him. <laughs> number two, <clears throat> he should humble himself sincerely before God. The Bible says in Mark 5.22, he fell down before him, at his feet. So the first one, he placed himself in the presence of God. God, I come to you with all respect, O Lord. And secondly, and sincerely, he fell down at Jesus' feet with all humility and respect. And number three, he opened up his wants and his need 
with respect in earnestness, beseeching or besotting God greatly. God, if you just come and lay your hands in number four, he believed he should have full confidence in the power and goodness of Christ that his request shall be granted. Lord, if you just put your hand upon her and she shall live. Four things in Matthew 9 verse 18. If you come in this way to God for salvation, for healing, restoration from any bondage in your life, you will surely be heard. Now following the journey of the Lord in verses 20 to 24, is an account of a woman having a hemorrhage for 12 years. And no one can stop the bleeding that her life become a mess, rejected, and considered dirty in the culture of the Jewish tradition. You are so dirty, like you are cursed to the community. Listen to this. The healing described her in this particular incident is a unique one. In many cases, when Jesus healed someone, he said the word. In some instances, he rebuked the devil out, be healed, blind out. Go to the priest, you are healed already. He speak the word. In some instances, he put his hand to the Tommy old girl, hold her hand, and he arose. And to Peter's mother-in-law, he took her hand and the fever left her. Now, here's a special revelation. It's not by word. It's not rebuking. It is not holding with his hand. But in this particular incident, you can say, without saying, saying a word, listen to this, the spilling and overflowing God's power is very evident, is stunning and overwhelming. His presence cured the woman with an issue of blood. And the faith of the recipient was compensated when she said, If only I may touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made well. Verse 22. Jesus said, Be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. You know, church, there's a practical side of this story of this woman that experienced healing without any word or anything. And listen to this. We too can definitely have the same blessings when you touch Jesus Christ with your prayers. For He will not deny you with all the abundance of His grace. You will be restored in the same hour, not next week, not next month, not next year, but right away. I close this exposition this afternoon. We covered three wonderful manifestations of the touch of compassion from the hand of our master. The first was a man without any choice to experience life of his own, possessed and being destroyed by evil spirits. The second is a young girl dying or dead already before Jairus left the house to speak to Jesus personally. And people were wailing for the loss of the only daughter. Now the third is a woman like an outcast and living alone, hiding from a public